Good day everyone! Before delving into our topic, can you guess the answer to this? Here's the clue. It's two words. Yay! Thank you so much for participating and you are right. The answer is school climate. Good day everyone. Our report is all about changing the climate of schools. And together with my group mates, Christine Landayan, Zea Maxine Hulagpos, Carl Lopez, Ronel Tutu, and Renan Barrett, and yours truly, Laurangel as a Chavo, we will be discussing important points of what you need to know about the topic. Here are the learning objectives. Identify the various facets and influences that form the school environment and assess its significance, the impact it has on the faculty and staff, the ways to make the school environment better, and the best approaches to make a positive difference. Our group also believe that creating a positive school climate requires a collective effort of students, teachers, administrators, and parents working together to foster a culture of respect, empathy, and collaboration. Now, let's understand what a school climate is. School climate refers to the quality and character of school life. It also refers to the social and educational environment at a school and encompasses all aspects related to how members of the school community perceive and experience the school. Additionally, School climate is based on patterns of students, parents, and school personnel's experience of school life and reflects norms, goals, values, interpersonal relationships, teaching and learning practices, and organizational structures. School climate generally refers to the social and educational environment at a school and whether it creates a positive setting for learning, academic achievement, and student growth. For example, how welcomed, valued, and respected they feel. Furthermore, school climate is often associated with and viewed through the lens of school safety. School environments vary greatly, whereas some schools feel friendly, inviting, and supportive, others feel exclusionary, unwelcoming, and even unsafe. Although, it is difficult to provide a concise definition for school climate. Most researchers agree that school climate is a multidimensional construct that includes physical, social, and academic dimensions. Here are the three dimensions of school climate, and it refers to the domains or aspects that contribute to the overall atmosphere and environment within a school. The first dimension is physical dimension, and it includes appearance of the school building and its classrooms, school size and ratio of students to teachers in the classroom, order and organization of classrooms in the school, availability of resources. This refers to how much access students and teachers have to equipment, uh, materials, and supplies that improve teaching, such as technology, tools, or books, and lastly, the safety and comfort. Second is the social dimension, and it includes quality of relationships, equitable and fair treatment of students, degree of competition and social comparison, and the degree to which students, teachers, and staff contribute to the decision-making at the school. Note that the relationships between the adults in a school, such as the teachers and principals, also has an important influence on school climate. Third and last is the academic dimension, and it includes quality of instruction, teacher expectations for student achievement, and monitoring student progress and promptly reporting results to students and parents. Consequently, Academic climate also refers to the teaching and learning practices promoted in the school. In simple words, school climate is the feeling of the school. That is why a positive school climate can foster a sense of belonging, safety, and support, while a negative or unhealthy school climate may result in feelings of fear, stress, or disengagement. 
There are four factors that shape a school climate, which are the following. The first one is safety, which refers to creating a secure and supportive environment where students and staff feel physically, emotionally, and socially safe, fostering a sense of well-being and trust. In this aspect, a positive school climate means feeling safe and having clear and consistent rules to maintain order and discipline. Second, teaching and learning or academic climate, which refers to the teaching and learning practices promoted in the school. It is composed of three factors, leadership, teaching and learning, and professional development. A positive academic climate in this aspect reflects a school environment where leadership is strong, teaching and learning practices are effective and student-centered, and there is a commitment to continuous professional development resulting in improved academic outcomes for students. The third aspect is the community, which refers to the quality of relationship within a school. It also includes the school connectedness, respect for diversity, and partnerships with other members of the community. In this aspect, a positive school climate is characterized by strong relationship, a sense of belonging, inclusivity, and collaborative efforts that promote understanding and engagement among all members of the school community and beyond. The last aspect is called the environment, which is the physical layout, size, and material resources of a school. A positive school climate in this dimension involves creating a well-designed, adequately resourced, and inclusive physical space that foster a conducive learning and growth environment for all school students. As you can see in the table above, here are some differences between a healthy and unhealthy school climate. And it is very evident that a negative school climate is characterized by an unsupportive, unhealthy, and sometimes hostile environment that may hinder the well-being and success of students and staff. On the other hand, a positive school climate is characterized by a supportive, inclusive, and nurturing environment that promotes the well-being and success of students and staff. That is why, as future language teachers, it's important to recognize the impact of school climate on students' well-being and success. By fostering a positive school climate, we can create an environment where students feel supported, included, and motivated to learn. This can contribute to their overall language development and academic achievement. Why is school climate important? A school's environment and the degree to which students feel connected, accepted, and respected has impact that can heavily influence students' well-being, academic achievement, positive relationship, and future success. How does school climate affect teachers and staff? School climate and culture affect teachers and staff every day and influences practically every aspect of their work, including physical and mental health. Teachers and staff who work in schools with unhealthy school climates and are not motivated to perform often seek ways to avoid coming to the school or contributing to the dysfunction. Over time, schools with unhealthy climates become toxic or hostile work environments. Changing the climate of schools. Changing the school climate means intentionally working to transform the overall atmosphere, culture, and social environment within a school. It involves creating a positive and inclusive environment where students, teachers, administrators, and staff feel safe, 
supported, and engaged. Additionally, let us all remember that a positive school climate is related to many positive student outcomes. How to change a school climate? Assess the current climate. Conduct a thorough assessment to understand the current school climate. This can include surveys, interviews, focus groups, and observations. Gather data on student experiences, perceptions, and areas of concern. Foster positive relationships. Understand the situation from the point of view of others while together coming up for an effective solution. Improve communication. Establish effective communication channels and practices to ensure transparency, active listening, and meaningful engagement between all stakeholders. Enhance inclusivity and diversity. Embrace and celebrate diversity, promote inclusivity, and provide resources and support that cater to all students' needs. Promote positive behavior. Implement a positive behavior support system that reinforces positive conduct, sets clear expectations, and addresses inappropriate behavior with consistency and fairness. Address bullying and harassment. Develop and enforce anti-bullying policies and programs, promoting a safe and secure environment for all students. Involve parents and the community. Encourage parental involvement and engage the community in school activities, fostering a sense of belonging and shared responsibility. Monitor and evaluate progress regularly. Assess the effectiveness of initiatives, gather feedback from stakeholders, and make data-driven adjustments to sustain positive change. Changing the climate of schools. Change is a characteristic of all schools. Schools, like any dynamic organizations constantly undergo shifts and adaptations in response to various internal and external factors. This inherent adaptability allows schools to evolve and improve over time. Change has direction. When schools undergo change, it is often purposeful and directed towards specific goals, whether it's implementing new teaching methodologies, updating curriculum, or adopting technology. Changes in schools are typically aimed at enhancing the learning environment. Organizational learning is possible. Schools have the capacity for organizational learning, meaning they can assimilate new knowledge, adjust practices, and improve as a whole. This process involves reflection, evaluation, and a commitment to continuous improvement fostering a culture of learning at both individual and organizational levels. Schools can be learning organizations. A learning organization is characterized by its ability to adapt, innovate, and embrace change. Schools, by fostering a culture that values continuous learning and improvement, can transform into learning organizations. This involves not only adapting to change but actively seeking it to enhance educational outcomes and organizational effectiveness. Ways on how to improve school climate. Collaborative decision-making involve a st all stakeholders in decision-making, fostering a democratic process that considers input from teachers and students, parents, and other community members. This inclusivity promotes a sense of ownership and shared responsibility for the school environment. Secondly, Action planning and, and intervention. Implement strategic action plans and interventions designed to address specific issues within the school climate. Proactive measures can help prevent problems and create a positive atmosphere for both students and staff. Third is informal school improvement goals. Tailor school improvement goals based on the unique needs of students and the school community. This ensures that the objectives align with the specific challenges and strengths of the school, promoting a targeted and effective approach to improvement. 
Fourth is personal opportunities provide personal development opportunities for school personnel. Continuous professional growth not only enhances the skills of educators but also contributes to a positive and dynamic school climate. Fifth is the scientific research integration. Utilize scientific research to inform various aspects of education, including curriculum development, instructional methods, student support system, and interventions. Evidence-based practices contribute to the overall effectiveness of the educational environment. And finally, is strengthening policies and procedures. Enhance policies and procedures related to the school learning environment and operational infrastructure. This includes refining data collection processes, improving planning and implementation strategies, and ensuring effective evaluation and sustainability measures. A robust framework supports the overall improvement of the school climate. These are strategies to positively impact the climate of schools, fostering a supportive and inclusive atmosphere. Number one, creating a positive culture. Example, implementing a weekly kindness challenge where students and teachers acknowledge and appreciate acts of kindness, fostering a culture of respect and empathy. Number two, teacher-student relationships. Example, establishing a mentorship program where older students guide younger ones, creating a supportive atmosphere and strengthening positive connections between students and mentors. Number three, inclusive education. Example, introducing a curriculum module that explores different cultural traditions during a month-long cultural awareness program, encouraging students to learn about and appreciate diverse perspectives. Number four, safe and welcoming physical spaces. Example, creating a designated student art corner in the school hallway showcasing diverse artwork created by students contributing to a visually appealing and inclusive environment. Number five, emotional well-being support. Example, implementing a weekly mindfulness Monday session where students participate in guide, guided mindfulness activities to promote stress reduction and emotional well-being. Number six, parental involvement. Example, hosting a monthly parent cafe where parents can meet with teachers in a relaxed setting to discuss their child's progress, fostering open communication and strengthening the school parent partnership. And finally, technology integration. Example, utilizing a school-wide communication app to share important announcements, updates, and achievements, ensuring seamless information flow, and enhancing collaboration between school, students, and parents. Here's another way on how to improve school climate. First is to participate in planning for school climate improvements. Um, planning for school climate improvement provides the foundation to ensure that your efforts are targeted to meet your school's needs. Number two is to engage stakeholders in school climate improvements. Um, <clears throat> for school climate improvements to be successful, um, everyone with an interest in the school needs to be performed and invo involved. Uh, people who feel engaged are more likely to partake in um, the school climate improvement process as planned versus those who feel disconnected or do not understand its purpose. Number three is to support the collection and use of reliable and valid school climate. Data collecting and using school climate data is essential to the school climate improvement process. Instructional staff are an important part of data collection. They often are the ones asked to collect data from students and complete surveys or focus groups about their um, own experiences. Number four is to help choose and implement school climate interventions. Um, by choosing the right interventions, it is an important part of school climate improvements. The intervention does not have to be a program, although choosing an evidence-based program is one option. Interventions also can be strategies, activities, policies, and services. And the next one is to support in going monitoring and evaluation of school climate improvements. Monitoring and evaluation provide evidence of how well you and your colleagues are 
implementing school climate improvements and the impact those efforts have on your school and students. All in all, the most crucial thing to take away from this is that when everyone in the school community feels safe, included and welcomed, there is a positive school climate. That concludes our discussion. We hope you gained a lot of knowledge about the school climate. For us to know your learnings from our discussion, we also prepared an assessment for you to answer and you can just comment on it in the comment box. Again, please read the questions that will be flashed on your screens carefully and comment your answers below on the comment box. Good luck!